Chapter 1 Ava Phillips was an ordinary kid in most ways. She loved riding her bike, reading fantasy novels, and dreaming about adventures far beyond the small town of Timberline where she lived. Except Ava had one very unusual secret, a best friend like no other. It had started one cold autumn morning when Ava was out hiking in the dense forests surrounding Timberline. She had ventured off the trail, kicking through piles of fallen leaves, when a strange snuffling sound made her freeze in her tracks. Peering through the shadowy trees, she saw a pair of beady black eyes staring back at her. And the creature emerged from the brush, revealing a compact, muscular body covered in coarse dark fur. A broad, flat head and distinctive humped shoulders told Ava she was face to face with a wolverine. Everybody in these parts knew to fear the fierce, stubborn predators. But Ava felt drawn to the animal rather than scared. Hey there, big fella, she said softly, backing away slowly. I'm not going to hurt you. And to her surprise, the wolverine didn't flee or attack. It cocked its head, almost seeming to study her with those piercing obsidian eyes. Then it turned and lumbered off without a sound, disappearing into the thick underbrush. From that day on, Ava found herself returning to that same spot in the hopes of seeing the wolverine again. She was just intrigued by the beast. And after several weeks, her curiosity paid off in a strange and wonderful way. She was crouched by the trail, one brisk morning, scanning the forest interior, when a familiar shape melted out of the foliage. The wolverine plodded right up to Ava, stopping just a few feet away. Up close, she could see the amazing details of its coarse pelt, the wicked curved claws on its paws, and the permanent snarl etched into its features. For a breathless moment, girl and animal simply regarded one another. Then, ever so faintly, the wolverine seemed to nod its large head. It was the start of an inexplicable bond between Ava and the ferocious creature. She began leaving the trail regularly, packing snacks of jerky and beef to lure it closer. The wolverine would eat from her hands, allowing her to gently pet its impenetrable fur. Soon Ava didn't need food to summon her new friend. They grew inseparable spending hours romping in forest clearings and cuddled up together watching the sun dip below the firs and pines. After months of bonding, she christened the Wolverine Ripper, both for its ferocious demeanor and for the playful way it shredded every plush toy she brought into the woods. And with Ripper by her side, dodging teachers and nosy parents, Ava had found the grand adventure she had always dreamed about. Chapter 2 Ava carefully kept her unorthodox friendship a secret knowing full well how the adults in Timberline would react if they found out she was cavorting with one of the most dangerous predators in the Pacific Northwest. Ripper was hers and hers alone, a bond that only the two of them could understand. If only she knew then just how vital that bond would prove to be. As the years rolled by, Earth itself came under threat of annihilation. At first it began with scattered missing persons cases and unexplained disappearances. The government conducted intense investigations, but every lead went cold. It was as if the vanished people had simply ceased to exist. And came the tone-setting event that revealed the true terror humanity faced. It was just an ordinary Saturday in New York City. Yellow cabs crawling through pedestrian clogged streets as typical summer haze baked the concrete canyons between skyscrapers. And then, with no warning whatsoever, the heavens opened up in apocalyptic wrath. Massive blazing spheres of light rained down, smashing directly into the city's heart. They weren't meteors or nuclear strikes, but something far more sinister. Vessels of an unmistakable extraterrestrial design. On impact, they unfurled like hideous metallic blossoms, disgorging swarms of nightmarish robotic entities. These weren't the little green men or tentacled beasts of classic sci-fi lore. They were heavily armored bipedal constructs, bristling with advanced weaponry and showing no regard for anything in their paths. The streets of Manhattan were engulfed in chaos as the alien machines set upon the populace, disintegrating everything around them with merciless precision blasts. Footage of the invasion spread across the internet in an unrelenting viral hurricane. Millions bore witness to the genocide unfolding in real time, as the rest of the world could only look on in horror and dread. This was not some blockbuster disaster film. It was the darkest of realities. The aliens had arrived, and their intentions were brutally clear. The New York invasion proved merely a prelude to total war against the human race. 
Within 24 hours, alien craft swarmed over every major city on Earth like viral spores. Most governments immediately attempted to fight back, scrambling fighter jets and ground troops in doomed skirmishes, but human weapons so far proved ineffective against the aliens' vastly superior technology. Timberline itself found itself squarely in the crosshairs as alien ships descended over the mountain valleys. Ava, now a high school senior, stood transfixed outside her house as a huge silvery craft slowly rotated overhead, gravity weapons demolishing buildings and surgical strikes. That was when Ripper came bounding up, fur bristled and growling low in his throat. It was as if the Wolverine sensed the chaos ravaging the human world he had grown to know so well during his time with Ava. What are we gonna do, buddy? Ava whispered, grabbing Ripper's fur. The aliens, they're going to kill us all. Just then, a blinding amber beam lanced out from the ship's underside, vaporizing the neighborhood park in a blinding flash. Ava clamped her eyes shut, convinced this was the end. But when she opened them again, Ripper was staring at her intently, a fierce gleam shining behind those cold black eyes. He seemed to emanate a message in that moment, like he had all those years ago when they first bonded in the forest, that the human girl and her animal friend would not go down without a fight. And that was when Ava felt a surge of courage and resolve unlike anything she'd ever experienced. The aliens may defeat them, but they would pay a terrible price in the process. Okay, Rip, you and me, we're gonna make these freaks regret ever coming to our planet. Chapter 3 With the United States government in tatters, every able-bodied person was pressed into hastily organized militia units to combat the extraterrestrial invasion. Ava and Ripper joined up with a group of ragtag fighters led by a former army ranger named Jax Harding, himself a rugged, no-nonsense type who had instantly taken a liking to Ava's fearsome animal companion. I've seen a lot of weird stuff in my time. Jax growled as Ripper snapped at a piece of rubble near their command post. But a goddamn wolverine. You never told me your pet was a freaking tank with fur. Phillips. And claws. Don't forget the claws, Ava replied with a wry smile. And for his part, Ripper remained utterly impassive amid the chaos and destruction around them. The towering smoke pillars and thunderous booms of alien ordnance barely seemed to register on his primal radar, just another morning scavenging for scraps in the wild. Using guerrilla tactics and a deep knowledge of Timberline's winding mountain trails, Harding's militia managed to inflict scattered casualties against alien recon patrols and scouting parties, hit hard and then fade back into the trees. That was their strategy. I mean, not a day went by without fierce skirmishes erupting in the woods and back roads around town. Tom Hava was amazed to see Ripper's true battle abilities finally unleashed. The moment conflict broke out, that cunning predator's brain seemed to switch over to a single-minded drive to kill and dominate. Ripper would streak into the fray like a furry missile, claws and fangs shredding through alien armor plating with each vicious lunge. Watching him fight was like seeing his gentle persona with Ava get subsumed by the elemental force of nature he truly was. Still, for all their ferocity and resourcefulness. The fight was nothing more than an irritating flea bite to the overwhelming alien forces. Each time Harding's guerrilla squads would claim a victory against scouting units, the aliens simply doubled down with heavier reinforcements. And in a matter of weeks, most of Timberline itself was reduced to smoldering rubble, leaving the human survivors to flee deeper into the forests. It was then that the first vanguard of dedicated alien hunter Killer units found their trail and proceeded to hunt them without mercy. The alien sentries moved with cybernetic precision through the veil of pines, sensor clusters probing the dim underbrush for any trace of human life signs. Jax's militia moved deeper into the dense black timber, weapons raised in trembling hands. Ava gripped Ripper's fur in one hand, an old hunting rifle in the other. She could hear unnatural clicking sounds and occasional electronic shrieks as the alien vanguard closed in. Then one of the things erupted from the bushes 50 yards away, an eight-foot bipedal machine with multiple limbs and a sensor stalk sprouting from its shoulders. It raised one jointed appendage, a wicked harpoon-like weapon sliding into place. Open fire. Jacks bellowed and a thunderous roar erupted as the humans opened up with automatic rifles and sidearms. And but the sentry seemed to shrug off the hail of bullets, those segmented insectoid bodies twisting with unnatural speed to avoid most of the fire. 
The snap of those alien harpoon launchers cut through the din. Ava watched in horror as razor-sharp flechettes sliced two of Jax's men in half, spraying the forest in crimson mist. In the confusion, one of the hunter bots swiveled towards Ava, weapon ports glowing malignantly. Before she could react, it loosed a volley of glowing plasma darts. Ava blinked, realizing she was still unhurt. That's when she saw Ripper, teeth gritted and fangs bared in a feral mask of agony as those burning projectiles sizzled in his hide. The wolverine gave a guttural snarl, then charged headlong at the alien machine with astounding speed. Before it could, could react, Ripper leapt into the air and slammed his full weight into the sentry's head, teeth gouging deep into its armored carapace. With a terrible screeching whine, the robot staggered and thrashed wildly as Ripper clung on for dear life slashing and shredding whatever limbs came near. Finally, with a hard torque of his bulky neck, the wolverine violently wrenched the sensor stock free, spewing sparks and hard Dalek fluid everywhere. The crippled sentry twitched wildly, then crumpled to the loamy earth in a heap. Rip! Ava cried, rushing to her friend's side. Already the blaster wounds were sizzling and oozing that beastly healing factor those few lucky enough to witness claimed wolverines possessed. Panting with exertion, his grizzled face smeared with alien fluids. The fearsome predator simply stared at the downed enemy with an expression that seemed almost like pride. And that instant, Ava realized he was no ordinary animal. He had tapped a terrifying wellspring of power she scarcely knew the depths of. As she did know one thing, with Ripper by her side, these alien invaders had just met their match. Chapter 4 What followed was a protracted campaign of hit-and-run attacks, fighting a merciless war of attrition against the overwhelming alien forces and their sinister cybernetic hunting machines. Texas guerrilla squads employed every bit of fieldcraft, booby traps and timber knees unforgiving wilderness against the enemy. And at the forefront was Ripper, darting in and out of the fray like a missile of condensed fury. He swiftly became renowned even among these hardened soldiers as the key to their survival. The aliens seemingly could not devise effective countermeasures against Ava's unique and terrifying animal partner. The disruptor grenades. Ripper shrugged off the electromagnetic pulses, homing in on the enemy's position through scent alone. Plasma restraints and bolus. Those sadistic traps simply enraged him into frenzied slashing that broke him free in seconds while leaving piles of alien wreckage in his wake. And no amount of heavy ordnance seemed capable of inflicting more than superficial burns before his accelerated healing kicked in. Ava wore Ripper's battle-scarred appearance like a badge of honor. The worse his wounds appeared, the more alien tech her beloved friend had managed to destroy. And she would whisper gentle words of reassurance as she tended his injuries in whatever rocky hideaway they made camp each night. That's my big guy showing those freaks. What's what? Half the time, Ripper seemed utterly oblivious to his own pain. The Wolverine had shaken off the last vestiges of domestication Ava had instilled in him. He moved with an almost supernatural sense of the battlefield, his sole purpose to kill and kill and keep on killing any extraterrestrial in sight. Time became an abstract, disjointed blur for Ava as they waged their desperate resistance across the blasted Timberline countryside. She lost track of weeks the battles all bleeding into one never-ending saga. There were triumphs gashed into her memory forever, like the time Ripper single-handedly brought down one of the alien juggernauts by wedging his impossible bulk into its leg servos, or the ill-fated ambush where he saved Ava from being vaporized by shredding apart a plasma turret with his razor claws, then dragging her to safety. But there was also an ocean of loss and tragedy that stained Ava's soul. Good friends died in her arms on a daily basis, cut down by alien weaponry or toxins or terrible, terrible wounds. She witnessed entire families exterminated, frozen in terror mere blocks from their homes. A trauma-scarred young boy even insisted on dragging his little sister's remains everywhere in a soiled blanket because he didn't know where else was safe. Jax had to pry the body away as gently as possible. His grizzled features creased in anguish. More than once. The old ranger gripped Ava's shoulders firmly and locked his intense gaze with hers. Kid, you gotta stay strong. If you want your furry pal and the rest of us to have any chance at all, you can't let it consume you, or we're all as good as dead. Ava took those words to heart, allowing herself to go numb to the unending horrors. 
She clung to her bond with Ripper as she had since that first day in the forest. It was her bulwark against the crushing tide of alien malice swamping Earth, no matter how hopeless it all seemed. The steadfast Wolverine stood by her side, never flinching or doubting the path ahead. Until finally, after months of ceaseless war in the shadows, the guerrilla resistance found its chance for one final defiant surge. It all began with a garbled radio intercept that hinted at a major alien communications relay being constructed amid the ruins of Timberline's industrial park. Chapter 5 Jax had been skeptical when the decode first came across his battered radio kit. They had been holed up in an abandoned mine shaft, evading the aliens' infrared detection sweeps when the transmission burst through a haze of static. It could be disinformation, a trap to lure us out. The grizzled commander growled, squinting over the hazy transcript. Maybe, Ava replied. She eyed Ripper, resting and licking his fur in a shadowy corner. But even a tiny shot at taking that communications hub down could cripple those bastards for a while. Give folks in other parts of the country a chance to take them down to deep down. The young soldier knew this would be their last stand either way. Their ammo was dwindling, food supplies almost depleted. The enemy seemed to have an inexhaustible number of reinforcements, and it was now or never for a grand gesture of defiance against their alien oppressors. Jack seemed to read her mind, that weazened face crinkling into a reluctant nod. Okay, kid, you and Rippers go take a reconnaissance team to scout this relay installation while I prep the rest of our forces. We catch those freaks off guard, blow that thing to scrap. He let the determined grin spreading across his battle-worn features finish the rest. A few hours later, Ava led her four-person recon squad through the shattered ruins of the industrial park, Ripper loping silently ahead. Burnt-out warehouses and charred heavy machinery littered the area, buckled train tracks snaking across the decimated landscape. They moved carefully from shadow to shadow, avoiding the bright amber luminance of alien sentry units patrolling the perimeter. Ava felt her pulse hammering as they neared what looked like the heart of the operation. Looming in the center of the wasteland stood a massive angular construct, bristling with comms arrays and sensor dishes. It reminded Ava of an archaic broadcast antenna from old sci-fi movies, but vastly more complex and otherworldly in design. This was it, the all-important alien relay that could very well turn the tide of the entire invasion if destroyed. Ripper paused beside a pile of rubble, snout twitching as he scented the air. Ava signaled the rest of the team to hold position, gripping her rifle tightly as she crept up next to her friend. That's when a piercing shriek split the air, sawing straight through Ava's nerves. She spun just in time to see one of the sentries bearing down on their position, unmistakable spines of metal bristling with plasma charges. Hit the deck, she yelled, throwing herself sideways as the machine opened fire. Bolts of superheated energy slashed through the air, one grazing Ava's shoulder and leaving an agonizing burn. She blinked away tears of pain, aiming her rifle at the onrushing bot, but her shots merely pinged off its heavy armor plating. That was when a streak of fur and muscle erupted past her. Ripper launched himself with a ferocious roar, smashing into the sentry with brutal force. His claws found purchase in the seams of its leg hydraulics and he wrenched violently, shredding the joint servos in a spray of sparks and the robot buck and thrashed, trying to dislodge Ripper even as the Wolverine sank his fangs into vital components. But the mechanical beast was simply no match for Ava's friend in a blind fury. With one last great heave, Ripper tore away the head unit entirely and flung it contemptuously to the side like a grotesque metal pumpkin. By the time the rest of the recon squad emerged from their hiding spots, the Wolverine stood atop the twitching husk of the sentry chest heaving as his feral gaze swept for any other threats. Not bad for just softening their defenses up a bit. A rip, Ava said with a tight grin. She cast a look towards the looming alien comms array, glinting balefully under the swirling clouds. It was almost time for the real show to start. Half a mile away, Jax gave the hand signal to his gathered platoons, and they began mobilizing with practiced stealth through the rubble-strewn park. Mortars, RPGs, every bit of heavy ordnance they could muster was brought to bear on the alien installation. And at the first thunderous barrage, a network of camouflage snipers also opened up on roving patrols. Alien sentries erupted in showers of sparks 
as high-caliber rounds found their marks with punishing accuracy. In seconds, the once sleepy industrial area transformed into a firestorm of chaos and destruction as human forces swarmed the comms array in waves. The Ripper bounded into the furious melee alongside Ava, instantly clamping his jaws around the limb of a security mech and wrenching it violently free in a shower of hydraulic fluid. Throughout the inferno, Jax bellowed orders and directed the flow of troops, even as mortar rounds detonated all around them. He was determined to make this one final stand against the invaders' count. Keep pushing, you dumb alien sons of bitches. We've got a wolverine on our side and he's pissed the hell off. Ava didn't even hear the shouts of battle or cries of the wounded over the thunderous ringing in her ears. She fought through a haze of smoke and fire, spraying bursts at any moving alien target who poked its sinister metal carapace into view. Many times Ripper moved like her own shadow lunging and slashing with brutal ferocity at the swarming bots to keep them from overwhelming her. And by the time the smoke began to clear, they had somehow battered and shredded their way into the heart of the comms array itself. Alien wreckage lay strewn and steaming, sparking piles all around as Ava planted the remaining explosives along the base. Only as the charges were set, and she looked around at the horrific carnage surrounding them, did the magnitude of what they had achieved sink in. Maybe a few dozen fighters remained standing out of Jax's original force, but the alien array lay in total ruin, soon to detonate in one final defiant salvo. She grabbed Ripper's matted fur, pulling him in close and nuzzling his savaged features. We did it, buddy. We showed those bastards what we're made of. The Wolverine simply swiveled those ancient, obsidian eyes towards her and seemed to offer the faintest nod of recognition. Just then, Jack staggered over. One arm hanging limply as a medic tried to staunch the flow of green ichor from his wounded side. His grizzled features were smeared with soot, but his eyes blazed with undisguised triumph. You two did all right, I reckon. That ought to be one halluva fireworks show when those charges blow. Maybe even knock that freak's calm grid out for a while. Buy us some time. He broke into a ragged chuckle, slapping Ripper's fur in a show of camaraderie. Damn, if the rest of this rock could have seen your furball tussle with those Tinkins, we might have had a chance after all. All around them, what remained of the human fighters watched in stoic silence. As Ava and Ripper set the final countdown on the explosives, the animal seemed to sense the solemn occasion too, standing proudly beside his lifelong friend as the array's core began shuddering and buckling with ominous metallic groans. 30 seconds. Ava clutched Ripper's fur one last time, feeling the steady beat of his powerful heart through that coarse pelt. No matter what happened, she would never have to face the unknown alone. Not with him at her side. Fifteen seconds. She looked into Ripper's fathomless black gaze, seeing her own defiant spirit mirrored back at her through those obsidian pools. Both human and beast linked by an invisible tether that even alien invasions could never break. Five seconds. Let's show these freaks how we do it back on Earth. Three, two, one. The alien comms array detonated in a cataclysmic blast, engulfing the shattered landscape in a searing ball of fire. Their mission was finally complete. Nenadij, the burnens and the war was just beginning. The shockwave from the comms array's detonation swept over Ava and the other survivors like a wall of searing force. When she blinked away the spots from her eyes, the looming alien spacecraft overhead seemed to shudder and falter, blazing engines flickering. Jax, look, she shouted, pointing up at the behemoth craft. I think we knocked out its communications. Then it's now or never, the old soldier growled, gesturing for his troops to ready what remaining ordnance they had. As one, the battered human fighters opened up on the listing alien ship with everything they had left. Missiles, grenades, and tank rounds found their marks in a blinding display of fire and thunder. Sections of the craft began burning away, panels disintegrating from the focused onslaught. Ripper threw back his head and let out a defiant howl, as if egging the invaders on for one final challenge. The alien ship's flickering engines flared, and then sputtered out completely, like an injured behemoth finally succumbing. It listed sideways and began an inexorable downward plummet with groan of protesting metal. 
Dean, the, the draggled human soldiers could only gape as the massive craft plowed into the ground outside Timberline, raining debris and shrapnel for miles around. The alien invasion, at least in this region, was over. Ava wrapped her arms around Ripper, burying her face in his ruff as tears of amazed victory streamed down her cheeks. We did it. We actually... Jack slapped the Wolverine's flank with a barking laugh. Hot damn, darling. I'd say that oversized woodchuck of yours was the difference. While the losses were catastrophic, the remaining humans celebrated with a revelation of joy and relief. And according to communications trickling in across re-established networks, their heroic actions had helped turn the tide of the alien onslaught in other parts of the world as well. It would still be a long, brutal road ahead to total liberation. But for now, Ava was content to revel in the hard-won sense of hope brought about by an unexpected alliance between girl and Wolverine against an overwhelming darkness.